All right, what we're going to do today is we're going to practice creating an area model to represent a given decimal multiplication problem. So let's start with 0 and 7 tenths multiplied by 0 and 8 tenths. Now remember, a value less than one whole can be considered a part. So what we really have in this instance is a part being multiplied by another part. And remember, a part of a part is just going to result in a smaller part. Now when creating an area model, we should reference back to the area of a rectangle, which we know can be found by multiplying the length by the width. So one of our two numbers should represent the length of our model, and the other number should represent the width of our model. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by letting 0 and 8 tenths represent the width of our model. So we're going to go ahead and shade 8 tenths of our figure. Okay, so we have 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, and of course, 8 tenths. Okay, now what we have to do is shade what will be the length of our figure. So let's go ahead and shade 7 tenths of our figure. So we have 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, and 7 tenths. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to take those two portions that we shaded and overlap them together. And the part of our areas that overlap will actually represent the product of our two numbers. Now remember, each individual square represents one one hundredth of a whole. Now, if you were to count everything that was inside the red borders, we have 56 of those squares. So we have a total of 56 hundredths, which is the product of 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. Okay, let's multiply 0 and 4 tenths by 1 and 2 tenths. So we're going to start by creating a model that represents 1 and 2 tenths. So we're going to let that represent the width of our figure. The blue area represents one whole, and the orange area represents two tenths. Now, taking a look at only the edge that represents the width, that width is a distance of one and two tenths. Okay, now that we have our model that represents one and two tenths, we must understand that we're multiplying that by zero and four tenths, which is less than one whole. So basically, we are only trying to figure out what part of 1.2 is. So that means we are only going to shade part of the model that we see. Okay, so what we have to do now is mark off four tenths that would represent the length of our rectangle. So we are not allowed to shade anything below that point. Okay, so if we were to count everything inside the border that we just defined there, we would have 48 squares. And each square is 1 one hundredth, and 48 groups of 1 one hundredth is 48 hundredths, which can be expressed as 0 0.48. All right, now we're going to multiply 2 and 3 tenths by 2. First, let's start with the width of our figure. So here we have 1, 2, and 3 tenths. All right, now because we use 2.3 to represent the width of our model, we have to use 2 to represent the length of our model. So we have to go a distance of 2 up and down. So basically in this example, we have two groups of 2.3, which we can clearly see on the screen. Now, let's take each one of these sections and add them together. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.3, and 4.6. So a few things that we should keep in mind here. Whenever you are multiplying two values that are less than one whole, such as 0 point something times 0 point something else, the result will always be less than one whole, which means you will always shade less than one whole of your area model. Now, if you are multiplying a value less than one by something greater than one, that means you are going to be shading part of something that is greater than one. And when multiplying two values that are greater than one, that just means you're going to end up with more than what you started with. You are not going to shade part of anything. You're just going to add on to what you already have. Hey, I just want to say thanks very much for checking out my math video. Please subscribe to my channel so when I upload new math videos, you can become informed as they become available.